What are the implications of this framework for thinking about the world? What do you see in this picture that's important? Yeah. So I would call that a theory of the firm. That is, we could, in this example, talk about a firm as owning this production process and a firm as choosing that point. And what allows me to think of this as a theory of the firm is I don't have to know who this guy is to know he's going to pick that point. That is, regardless of what indifference curves this fella has, he's always going to want to produce here, no matter who owns it. You understand why that's a theory of the firm? Because we're going to be able to talk about firm behavior without talking about who the owner is. We're going to say, this firm is going to maximize profits, or this firm is going to maximize value. Whatever it is, in this simple competitive marketplace, where they can buy and sell oranges in this market, this NAFTA market, this, this is where people are going to produce, regardless of who it is. If I owned it, you owned it, he owned it, doesn't matter who owns it. Everybody would make the same choice. Would it be what? Yeah, I guess, yeah. It's, no, it's the same idea, right? It's the idea is we can simply think about the producers, and we're going to do this through most of the quarter. We're going to talk about suppliers as firms without saying who owns them. We're just going to abstract from the ownership because the concept is whoever owns it is going to want to be here. Okay? So that's one thing we learned from this graph. What else do we learn? Yeah, that's another good one. Trade is good. That's exactly how I would say it. Trade is good. Right? That is, this is another fundamental piece of economics. That's, you ask why, why I do such a simple model. The reason I do this really simple model is it produces some very important results in economics. Like the, you have a theory of the firm. Why we talk about profit maximization. Number two, trade is good. He's better off. And the gains in trade come most, or biggest, the more different the world price is from your price, right? Price difference implies gains to trade. And you can see clearly in this example that the steeper we make this, the better off he's going to be, right? As I make it steeper and steeper, he's going to get better off. Until, and if I go back the other way, he's going to get worse and worse off until he gets no gains from trade. And then the flatter I make it from that point on, the better off he's going to be. Right? So it's monotonic in that direction. Right? He's going to gain a lot when the willingness to pay. Now, Everybody should be like looking back and saying, you know that example he was talking about with like the poor guys and all that stuff? People see how that's related to this? If you don't, go home and think about it. Because it's very similar. It's very much the same economics that we were talking about there. Okay? Any, any other questions that people, that people have? Anything else? How about a competitive firm produces where price equals marginal cost? Right? That's this tangency right here. That's saying he's going to keep producing oranges to the point where the marginal cost of an orange is equal to the market price of an orange. And you also can get, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff. Marginal cost equals marginal value, right? That is his slope here. 
is the same as this slope here. Both equal to marginal cost equal to marginal value. They're not at the same point, but in equilibrium, his marginal value of oranges will be equal to his marginal cost of oranges. That was true when he was by himself and continues to be true when he can trade in this world market. Okay?